Welcome to the Crit House, everybody. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are very happy today to be looking at documentary work. And we are doing that with the good folks at the Social Documentary Network. Uh, Glenn Ruga is here and Lisa Dubois from SDN. Uh, if you don't know SDN, it is a community of documentary photographers, or editors and curators and NGOs, non-governmental organizations, as well as students and journalists and others. And they all believe in the power of visual storytelling. SDN has featured more than 4,000 documentary projects by nearly 3,000 photographers from all over the world. And SDN has also done exhibitions and educational programs, lecture series, and they are the publishers of Zeke Magazine, the uh, magazine of global documentary. So uh, first of all, welcome to the folks from SDN. It's great to have you. Um, let me do a brief introduction. Lisa Dubois is a New York-based photojournalist, and she's a curator. Lisa is a member of Unfoco and a contributor to the Social Documentary Network and uh, the Edge of Humanity magazine. And Mr. Ruga, Glenn Ruga, is with us. He is a photographer, a graphic designer, curator, and he is the founder of SDN. Uh, when he was uh, a photographer, I guess you're probably still a photographer now in some way, shape, or form, right? Uh, when he was a photographer, he worked in Bosnia and in Kosovo and on a project in an immig immigrant community in Holyoke, Massachusetts. And uh, previous to his work here at SDN, uh, he was the executive director of the Photographic Resource Center in Boston. Uh, welcome to you both again. Our photographer today, which we're very excited about, I'm very excited about, is Cheryl Galloway, and she is presenting a project for us called Women's Rights Are human rights. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you for inviting me to do this uh, critique and review of the work. Um, and thank you to Social Documentary Network. I came across SDN, um, I think it was last year, uh, 2021 or 2020, I can't remember. Um, it was sometime during the pandemic. I did a workshop a, um, with Glenn and um, I've followed SDN and just like the work that they're putting out and um, the voice that they give to photographers um, because not everyone is able to like get on a, a, a big platform. The work that I created um, basically is about the Women's March that took place in Washington, D.C. on May 14th of this year. It was in response to the leaked uh, opinion of the Supreme Court, which could overturn Roe v. Wade. Um, I come to this as a foreigner. I'm from Zimbabwe, uh, where it's very male dominated and abortion is not legal. Um, they say it is, but it's only in three very onerous instances. And the woman really has to get over very high hurdles in order to have um, the government basically um, confirm that she can have an abortion. And um, so what I wanted to do was amplify the voices and just highlight what was being said at the march by the people attending. And that was my goal to, um, when I went to the march, uh, I wanted to see what American women felt about it. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised by the number of men there who were also supporting um, the women's movement. And um, I decided to put the work on SDN. Uh, I feel that, you know, it's a great platform for uh, work that maybe is not usually seen in, in um, mainstream media, uh, you know, like seeing women rally for this cause. And, and that was my, my intention with the work. Well, Cheryl, it's, a, it's, it's powerful work. We're watching the images come by as you were chatting. Um, Say, so Glenn, um, can we start with you? So, I mean, as, as a person who has seen a lot of, and done a lot of documentary work um, project. So what, what is successful here? And maybe what are some things that she could think about to bring it sort of up to the next level, if there is another level? 
Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few questions that um, need answering, but based on what you've asked, um, this clearly falls within the genre of protest or demonstration photography, which is kind of its own thing. And in the annals of SCN, there are hundreds of exhibitions of protests of all types. And I find that this particular project really, really resonates and is among the better work of um, protests and demonstration photography we've seen. Um, and it's different than the core of an exhibit on the SDN website, which is really explores a particular theme in depth with, inform with in-depth information about um, a more limited group of subjects and about the theme. Like the protest photography um, is really, um, you know, about the signs, about the energy, um, about how to make sense visually of all of this material. And um, what we're not seeing right here in this full screen viewing of the exhibit is what we refer to as the abstract, um, which gives the overview of the situation, which, which is always very important as well. And Cheryl has done a, a very good job with that. But um, I, I think in terms of addressing uh, what could be done on the streets with um, protest photography with um, people and the signs and the composition and the expressions. You know, I think uh, um, Cheryl has really done an outstanding job with this. And um, earlier in our discussion, you know, um, before we went live, Cheryl said, well, what's next? What, what more can I be doing with this? And I just want to say, Cheryl, that just having this work in itself is very powerful, that it energizes people who look at it to um, care and be more involved. It certainly does for me when I look at this, uh, it just reminds me how important this issue is and um, how uh, to see other people being so committed to it. And, and then to hear you talk about it as well, just adds that other level of depth to it. Lisa, when you see this work um, and you think about it sort of in the sphere of documentary, I mean, what's your, what how, how how do you how do you critique it one of the things i would attitude. say is like this photograph right now that you just had on um right. with the dog um it's not necessarily the dog itself but the fact that she stopped and engaged with this woman makes big difference to me because i've i've photographed a lot of you know protests i've seen a lot of photograph of protests but um, when you can actually stop a person and because everybody's in that mode of moving fast and, you know, in that same energy. So this is like um, a portrait where of, of this event, you know, of a person at this event. So I would, um, if I was talking, you know, telling Cheryl, I would say, add a little bit, you know, more of this to give a more personal uh you know, try to capture a few more of these people. Um, in terms of where to go with it, I mean, it's endless. I mean, there's many magazines and many publications, and there are also the people who organize this themselves, you know, who might be interested in um, all organizations, and you should keep your eye out on, uh, sometimes there's, uh, you know, a call for for photography for you could check every so often but there's a call for protest photography itself you know that genre so you could keep your eyes out and they'll always submit this and and one of the things that's that's uh that i look for too is i look for things that tell give you an idea of other than the signs themselves um, like photographs of the actual location, which she has, you know, which is good. You know, that's extremely important to have photographs of the location so you can see where, where this took place because that adds to the historic aspect of the photograph, you know, too. And, you know, so that's also what's good about this type of photography is that, you know, when you know what year it is, because you could look at this a hundred years from now, 
And there's always been protests on abortions for a long, long, long time. So you might want to see these photographs and you would say, well, in, in 2022, this is what they were doing, but they were also, you know, doing the same thing in, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, how did the signs change? You know, so that's, that's what I look for, the historic things that tell a little bit about what history will say, you know, many years to come, how they'll see it. So <clears throat> of, of the four of us, I'm the least expert on this, this kind of work. But so when, um, when I talk to people about my street photography, one of the things that is often is said is that uh, the, the, the signs, the words are a distraction. Um, that it takes you out of the out of the scene, you know, if there's a Reebok sign or whatever it is. But in this case, this is so much of this is about the signage and the the messaging. But um, but I I think what I'm seeing in Cheryl's work is that it's it's not she's she's done a really good job of of taking the signage and creating something more than just people with signs. I mean, some of the images are just are are really evocative. Just they're just good photographs with good messages. Right here, this is one of my favorite photos of the whole series. I, I just think the composition, the expressions, the signs, um, just everything works together really well. You say, uh, Jeff, you say you're the one with the least experience in documentary photography. I don't shoot uh, protest photography at all. This was my first time doing it. Um, but I, I wanted to tell the story of what the people were feeling and and saying and and how and get that like translate that into the, into the images um so just took all the street photography knowledge that i had and was like you know i have to get close to the people and that was a real challenge for me because um i didn't want to shoot with a, a zoom lens um because I didn't want to intimidate people with that. So I had to get really close to them with uh, just a 35. So um, Glenn, let me ask you this. So you've, you, um, you mentioned that you see a lot of these protests, um, protest projects. What, what is the difference between a, a good protest project and one that doesn't sing for you? Well, Number one, it's the difference between good photographs and just mediocre photographs. I mean, everything that we're concerned about on SDN begins with uh, a good, well-composed photograph. If, um, if I can say some critical things about this work, uh, Cheryl, sometimes I find some of the photographs a, a bit dark, and I don't know if that was intentional or an oversight, or maybe it's like something technical in the profile that you use and how it ended up on the internet, if it ended up being darker than what your intention was. Like, I think this photograph is fine, but but some of them just seem to be a little bit flat and a little bit dark. It looked and... like it was a very, very overcast day, like really overcast. So the sky is all white too. So it doesn't help the situation, you know? Um, yeah, it was raining. <laughs> it was um, raining. I mean, it's tech. I mean, typically, this is like this photograph. This the, the lighting is perfect for uh, for you know because you don't have any glare in the sun and all that. But um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a little bit contrast. Some of them a little contrasty. That I could have let you could have let up on the contrast, but the there's nothing you could do with that sky for sure because it's it's blown out, you know and Jeff, can we go back to the other photograph for a second, the one we're just looking at? This one? Sure. Yeah, so in the gallery, this is the first one. And, and Cheryl, mm -hmm. I actually feel that this is probably one of the weakest photographs of the whole series, mm -hmm. compositionally. And I was just curious as to why you, you chose to make this the first one. Um, I just went chronologically um, uh, of from the time that I started and was picking the pictures. Um, I mean, I didn't think that um, the composition was that great, but I did like the sign, uh, her sign, um, freedom of religion um, equals freedom from religion. 
um, that for me, it was the message was mm. the most important thing on her sign. But there wasn't much around her um, that I could pull in that, you know, you could really like look at because that was like on the way to the march. Yeah. So Glenn, let me ask you something. You asked about uh, the, the sequencing. If, if you were if you were going about looking at this, and I know we can't look at all of the images on one screen, um, which makes it hard to talk about, but what would you, what would be your suggestion with regard to sequencing of this project? Um, well, I, I always feel it's helpful to start out with a strong photograph. Um, for the SDN website, we chose to feature the one that I pointed out earlier as the one that would be highlighted on the website and mm -hmm. it, it's further along in the exhibit. So when her exhibit appears on the homepage of SDN, it, it, it's that image that we chose because we um, I, I personally just felt it was the strongest. Um, you know, so sometimes chronologically isn't um, the best way to approach it, but you bring up an interesting point, Cheryl, about the content of that sign. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the content of the sign was extremely important, but when, when does um, content overpower the formal um, aspects of the photograph that we're interested in? Um, I mean, you know, sometimes like, the raw information is so important that everything else isn't important, except that I don't find that's that the, that's the case with that photograph as a viewer. M maybe for you as a photographer, if, it, if that's the most important message, um, I kind of get that. But there's so many other strong signs here that are very strong messages as well. I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm drawn toward, uh, I'm trying to find it right now, this one uh, here that, uh, it's, I, I find it just graphically powerful when I, when I look mm -hmm. at it. I enjoy that image. Kudos from the host. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's so interesting how everybody has a different perspective on which photographs they like. Well, and that's, and that's, really, that's really the point of having more than just one person to hear to talk about them is because everybody does have a different, uh, a different viewpoint and a different uh, way of looking at things. I, I, the ones that I find uh, are, are personal image, I, I think this one's strong because you're not seeing, you're just seeing the person sort of poke over the face. It's sort of graphically interesting. Um, uh, Lisa, I think you were saying um, at, the, at the start that it's important to sort of put it in, in, a, in the place. Um, and this is, you know, this puts, puts it squarely in Washington, DC. You know where you are right. when you see, when you see okay. this image. And, uh, you know, so this, this is one of the ones that I thought was, um, did what you were talking about when you were speaking before. Absolutely. I mean, if you didn't have, the, I don't know how many photographs show the buildings, I, I would have to go through them all again. But if you didn't have this photograph in there, it could be anywhere, you know? So that's the importance of, of showing that in a series of photographs of this type, in my opinion. Cheryl, I have no, I know, I have no idea what your interest is moving beyond this. I, I think it's hard though to get, um, to do more than what we're seeing um, with, protest photography. The question is how to take your photography beyond this. And I very much appreciated what Lisa said earlier about the photograph you had of that individual person, um, rather than these group shots of anonymous people. And I, I think often that that's kind of the next step is to really um, start picking out and understanding some of these individual people and with, with stories and testimony from them. Um, to hear about them, hear about their thoughts and their experiences. I, I think that's always the next step with documentary to, to, to really learn about the subjects more. To that point, I actually went to photograph the March for Our Lives and um, I went armed with pen and paper and mm. I got some names and just personal stories oh, and message. did more of the, um, the portraiture stuff uh like taking pictures of, of groups of people asking names ages and you know like if how they've been affected by gun violence i i like this photograph um i just wanted to point it out because you the not that one the one before yep. this one Sorry, it's, yep i mean it's just like you could see her face and she has a certain kind of look on her face and the people you could see that there's a lot of people behind her but it's not your it's not your standards marching I mean it's cropped I I normally you know the cropping 
under you know at the mouth I but it still has it still says something for me because it draws me into her but I see all this other you know this this other thing these other things that are going on so um in terms of breaking it up um I think that that did that you know that served that purpose because you did one thing you just don't want to do and you didn't and you did a like you did a great job i'm saying you you want you don't want just people with signs marching you know you want pictures like a something a little like this and just you know a variety of different uh perspectives well uh cheryl as i said before thank you so much for for sharing your work it's uh it's always it's always hard to put your your work out there and hear what other people have to say we want to also thank the folks from the social documentary network um you'd seen the images that were we were showing were coming from the sdn website and uh it is a, an opportunity to show work if you are have a, a documentary project and uh uh the website is if i'm right glenn correct me if i'm wrong socialdocumentary.net that's correct all right, got it. <laughs> um, if you are interested in showing your work on the Crit House, then you uh, certainly can do that on our website, thecrithouse.com. There is a page where you can uh, enter your information to participate. In the future, we'll be looking at uh, book projects. We will be looking at uh, fine art, and we'll be doing more street photography. We're welcome all kinds of work here on the Crit House. Um, and here, we also are going to be linking um, out uh, somewhere on the screen here, to a video from SDN, Documentary Fo Photography Reconsidered. And we encourage you to take a look at that as well. Thank you for watching The Crit House.